I want to acknowledge the trustees that have made the time to come here today, our trustee Hulu Lindsay. Please stand, Hulu. It was a unanimous decision to move forward with this lawsuit. As you know, it's not often that we can agree on a single item. It took deliberations and consultation and research to come up with this keyword on how we malama the, the, ma, the mala of Mauna Kea. It is certain that uh, the task ahead of us was to call to the front line the issues that these organizations have failed. Uh, you will see in our lawsuit it is very detailed uh, in the outcomes on reviewing the auditor's report and their failure and the accountability of the resources that they've, always, that they've utilized over time. I humbly come before you because I know this is going to shake up the, the university and DLNR and the governor of the state of Hawaii. But we come in the name of our beneficiaries and as the Office of Wine Affairs to do the best we can and to protect and maintain the longevity of the mountain. We are concerned about the permits that have been issued that are not managed properly and how they have so much freedom on and off the island and how it's causing such concern by all of our people. So on behalf of the trustees of the Office of Wine Affairs, I am proud to acknowledge our ad hoc committee led by Trustee Dan Ahuna for the last two years. It is our beneficiaries that question us, what's next, trustees? They come to us, they remind us of the lack of management practices, the dismantling of the, the, the what do you call that stuff up there? Uh, the what? Yeah, the ahu, all of those things are hurtful to the people. But it's the leadership of Trustee Ahura that has gotten us this far. So as you look at what we're doing, it's not a personal attack. Please don't take it personal. It is part of our duty and responsibility under our kuleana as the Office of Foreign Affairs and as a semi-autonomous group to go forward and correct that crooked path and to make it straight and to stand for our people and the longevity for the future. So it wasn't an easy decision, but we are grateful that we have come this far and that we have such um, hard work that was done on the legal end. And you will see in the lawsuit and you'll be grateful that all of this stuff is coming forward. So we ask that you continue to support us and don't be, don't be critical of what we've done because it's something that we've, we've agreed that this is in the best interest of our people. This is our role as leaders to keep doing those things even if it's not popular. So we move forward with that. So I'll take this time to call Trustee Dan Ahuna, the Ad Hoc Committee Chair. In 50 years, the state has treated the Mauna as anything but special. The mismanagement of Mauna Kea is not a new issue. The state and UH have been called to task for their management failures dating back to the 1970s. The community has long recognized that unregulated public access coupled with the astronomy industry's exploitation of Mauna Kea pose a severe threat to the mountain's natural and cultural resources. Generations of Native Hawaiians have expressed outrage over the state's neglect of the Mauna. For decades, OHA has joined our community in advocating at the legislature, the UH Board of Regents, and the BLNR for improved management. Four state audits have slammed the state and UH's stewardship of Mauna Kea, and the governor and the university president have both publicly admitted to failing to meet their management responsibilities. Yet management continues to take a back seat to astronomy. In response to the most recent rounds of protests and opposition to more unregulated development, the OHA board formed an ad hoc committee to more closely assess the issue. We conducted due diligence and looked into the numerous concerns and potential legal issues raised by community members and others regarding the state's management failures. In 2015, OHA entered into a mediated process with the state and UH to address these management shortcomings. Ultimately, this nearly two-year process was unsuccessful. So here we are today, left with no other resource but to turn to the courts to compel the state to fulfill its legal obligation to properly malama mauna kea. This is not about a single telescope. This is not about Hawaiian culture versus science. This is 100% about the state and UH failing the Mauna. It is finally time to abandon any hope that UH is capable or even willing to be proper stewards. 
We need to come together as a, com as a community to completely rethink how we care for the Mauna. And that starts with canceling the university's master lease with, while a path forward is developed. After 50 years of empty promises to the Mauna and our community, the state needs to be held accountable. Mauna Kea deserves better. Mahalo, and I will be handing things over to Justice Klein for any questions. Thank you, and mahalo. The steadfastness of continuing to defend the Mauna and to raise the banner about the university and their lack of follow through and the DLNR management with permits that we have dedicated this lawsuit. And I cannot thank enough the trustees for agreeing to move forward and to allow the Board of Trustees attorney, Robert Klein, with his team to do the details that you will now hear about. Thank you, Robert. So I'm here to answer any questions you might have about the lawsuit. I know some of you just picked it up right now. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a very interesting complaint. I don't think you'll see these kinds of complaints normally filed because it gives you a it gives you a feeling of the Hawaiians' connection to Mauna Kea uh, from a historic standpoint and a legendary standpoint as background. It also talks about the attempts that we made uh, as OHA's negotiating team led by Trustee Ahuna to uh, speak frankly with the state of Hawaii and the University of Hawaii about ways to avoid this lawsuit. So for two years we were in mediation and discussions, and I wouldn't say that they were regular meetings. They happened irregularly, but they were uh, focused on a way to actually uh, avoid a lawsuit. And for OHA to have a place in the management of Mauna Kea was extremely important to our trustees. All OHA has is a role as a consultant, and consultants are not always listened to. And in this case, we're not. So we feel that the uh, lawsuit is an extension of the OHA trustees' fiduciary duties and obligations to their beneficiaries to protect the resources on Mauna Kea and to make sure that the constitutionally protected rights of Native Hawaiians are uh, not only acknowledged but protected in the management of the mountain going forward. I, I don't think there's any disagreement that from the time that the lease was entered into between DLNR and the UH and the subsequent subleases that the mountain has been mismanaged. We have statements from the governor saying exactly that and the University of Hawaii. So we understand that uh, mismanagement for the last, since 1968, has been the hallmark of running this mountain. And so the rights of Hawaiians are the ones that have been sacrificed in the interest of astronomy, and we need to restore the balance of that. And that's the point of the lawsuit. So it's a multi-count lawsuit. It asks for declaratory injunctive relief in accounting for damages and for rescission of the current lease between the DLNR and the University of Hawaii. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. What was the breaking point for those meetings because it sounded like, I mean, the state is saying that they wanted everyone at the table to have these discussions. What was the point that, that, that drew the line? Well, um, actually it was because not everybody was going to be at the table. That was sort of the breaking point. And the last uh, attempt to put everybody at the table, um, the state's position was not to include the Department of Land and Natural Resources at the table. So that was a decision they made that obviously we can't have an agreement that doesn't involve the DLNR. So that was the, that was the point at which uh, I think the trustees decided that uh, we've been talking too long. The talking has not really been a dialogue, it's sort of been a monologue by us, always uh, coming forward with new plans, new ideas, and when uh, when the DLNR was going to be left out of a discussion, uh, for whatever reason we don't know, there's nothing further that we could really do. Who were the stakeholders, I guess, invited? Uh, I, I'm not going to go into detail on that um, because that was a that was a private meeting that we had, but uh, the state was represented at the highest levels, and so was OHA, and 
um, the other people who should have been there weren't. You've heard uh, UH's response before to um, claims of mismanagement. They will say that, yes, there were critical audits in the past, but those wrongs of the past have been corrected and they are properly managing the MOMNA. What is your response to that? Well, that's not how I understand the UH's position. The UH's position is they acknowledge wrongdoing and mismanagement, which is obvious. Uh, but their position always is, well, give us more time, we'll do better. We'll do better. We are doing better. Well, we've heard that since forever. We've, we've talking, we're talking about four scathing audits by an independent the legislative auditor has held them to task for not doing better. Since 2009, they've had the ability, the university, to have rules governing the, the mountain. 2009, we still don't have rules. So, it uh, yet telescopes get built and go up, but no rules about running the mountain. So, we're talking almost you know nine years, still no rules. So, we're going to be better and do better and manage better and comply with auditor reports. It's sort of ringing hollow at this point. You're asking for uh, the state to terminate the contract with the University of Hawaii, a lawsuit that could be costly and time-consuming. Any estimate as to how long a lawsuit like this might take or how much of OHA's money it might take to uh, pursue this lawsuit? No, I think this lawsuit is can be done fairly promptly because there's no doubt that the University of Hawaii and the DLNR have mismanaged the mountain. Um, in 2013, um, this was a CrossFit uh, group that went up to exercise on the mountain. Um, uh, there was a Honolulu uh, weekly, uh, not weekly, a Honolulu magazine um, article on that. This is uh, uh, a skier jumping over two police officers who are throwing shakas as he jumps over them. Um, uh, obviously, Mama Care with the telescopes in the background, and this was a. a this was from 2015. This was a fire uh, from 2000. Uh, I'm not sure. I think 2013 or 14. Um, the Gemini Telescope. There's actually a video of that as well. You know, one of the big things, uh, one of the big access issues on the mountain is uh, uh, related to cars. Uh, there's a, a, a hairpin turn on the uh, uh, up the summit road that's claimed numerous cars, a few lives. Just in March, there was a. Uh, a fatality as well in the mountain <coughs> on that road. Um, yeah, but I mean, I think if you read the lawsuit, I think one of the, the things we do talk about is the state's failure to uh, create a, um, a a place on the mountain that's respectful of Hawaiian culture. And I think uh, clearly, you know, Mauna Kea is a very sacred place for us, for Native Hawaiians. Um, that? Oh, sure. Yeah, so, you know, uh, Monica is a very sacred place for Native Hawaiians, uh, and UH has a responsibility to manage it, um, you know, through their lease. The lease talks about uh, not having offensive behavior on the mountain, and clearly I think some of these things over here are, I think, definitely the CrossFit things and, you know, the snowboarding, in addition to being public health uh, issues, are, uh, I think a lot of Hawaiians believe they're disrespectful. It, I mean, these these activities look like they were done by like individuals. Um, it's not. I mean, obviously, a company would condone a fire, but right. is it? Are you saying that UH and its management may turn the other way in allowing these activities? As in, these are individuals just doing this thing. Like, we know lots of people who go and right. ski and snowboard up at Mauna Kea. So what? So I think you how, know, would, how would it be better managed right. to prevent these sorts of things? Right. And I think the big issue is if you look at the comprehensive management plan um, and what has consistently been recommended, uh, you know, in 1998, uh, the state auditor first began recommending um, that UH and DNR promulgate rules, rules that would uh, enable them to manage access, public access. You know, from 1974, uh, Governor Ariyoshi was, you know, People back then were identifying, hey, you know, there's a lot more uh, access issues, a lot more people going up to the mountain. You know, astronomy is up there, so you have to increase access. Uh, and so for years, I mean, 
UH has had and DNR has had draft rules to regulate access and commercial activities. Uh, I think 80s, 90s, and the 2000s. They were given specific rulemaking authority by the legislature in 2009. And what we have today is still, after getting the authority 10 years ago, and being specifically told in 1998 by the state auditor to promulgate rules to sort of regulate this stuff, UH has not done anything. Um, but I think as Justice Klein has said, you know, they've consistently said they're gonna do something, they've never done it, but lo and behold, you know, 13 telescopes have gone up and no regulation of the mountain. Um, and those rules are supposed to sort of guide uh, this sort of stuff and guide access in a way that's respectful for you know, the, the sacredness of the mountain. Um, Justice, I had another question for you. Sure. Did, does OHA believe that, I mean, some Native Hawaiians believe that telescopes should be taken down. Does OHA believe that? Well, part of, there should be a decommissioning plan that's actually effective. And uh, OHA has supported decommissioning. Uh, and by decommissioning, that means when tele telescopes become obsolete, and there are obsolete tele telescopes on the mountain that don't, they don't function well because they evolve over time to better telescopes. Actually, the earlier ones should be decommissioned and the site reclaimed, and the mountain restored to its natural state. So it does support decommissioning. What's the next step? I mean, you filed a lawsuit yesterday. Yeah. Um, what's just process-wise, what's next? Well, the defendants have an opportunity to answer the complaint, and then we can move forward as a normal complaint with uh, our legal options, including motions for summary judgment, other motions, and then the discovery process. And I guess it depends on how they defend the lawsuit. We're prepared to take it all the way. 